I love Homestuck. Oh, oh it's, it's a great day to be alive. Everyone loves Yeah, that's what I said. What did I say? Oh! Holy shit! What the fuck? Hey guys. Hello. It's me, John Egbert. Yeah, I know that. I know that guy. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Hi, John. Vriska Circuit. Yay! This is this is the lecture about Vriska Circuit. I'm going to tell you uh, all about her character arc and why she is uh, the best character in Homestuck and really cool and, and all that. Uh, so, first of all, yes? Is Vriska based or cringe? Well, as you can see here, she is based. Uh, nice. What? Vriska nice. is based. Based? Yes, that is based. Eights? Eights? The, the thing... Alright, let's start with the, the trolls. Mm -hmm. Vriska is an alien. She is an alien race called Trolls. And that is literally what it is based on, as in internet trolls, as in, like, I hate you and I will make you feel bad trolls. Did, mm. did we already say she's from Homestuck? No, like I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting okay. to that. <laughs> okay. Settle down, boy. Right on. <laughs> the Eights is a typing quirk. All of the trolls in Homestuck have a annoying, obnoxious typing quirk that they use to annoy human beings who are trying to just live their lives. Um, some of them talk in all caps, some of them alternate between caps and lowercase. Riska likes the, the number 8 and things about 8, so she replaces B's with 8's and things that sound like 8 with 8's. So, based. Mm. <laughs> based. Nice. Based. So, Riska is an alien. And uh, she is from a different planet than real life. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> so the, the only thing, the main things you need to know about Riska, uh, these are the, the main things. Riska did nothing wrong. This is what you're going to learn. Mm. Riska can't catch a break, and Riska is based. These are the core tenets of Riska. Um, all of this is is important, I'm sure. And this is the timeline of it, so let's just start with the beginning, yes? Are these tenants canonized, or are they just your subjective opinion? There's the subjective opinion that you should have if you have a brain when you get to the end of Homestuck. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, so, timeline of events, Spider-Man. So, yes? If there were some uh, stupid loser in the audience who didn't know Homestuck, would they understand any of this that you're about to explain? Yes, because I'm going to go through all of these things as they relate to her for Thank people God. who are stupid, Thank like a, any, any idiots who haven't read Homestuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, spider Mom. Uh, this is a spider Mom. In, uh, in, uh, on Alternia, which is the planet that these trolls live, uh, Homestuck, ch uh, not Homestuck characters, trolls, they, they don't grow up in normal circumstances. They don't have parents. They uh, have Lusus, Lusai, which is basically giant beasts that raise them from birth, like uh, Romulus and Remus or whatever, with that whole wolf thing that wasn't true. <laughs> Unlike Homestuck, which is. <laughs> Unlike old, old, Homestuck with it, which is. Race of Mowgli's. So, the point of the spider mom is to explain a little bit about how Vriska gets the way she is. Because her spider mom um, is not very nice. It's a giant spider. It needs to feed. And Vriska is tasked with not only being raised by it, you know, as a baby. She, you know, it's, it's very difficult being a troll. You have to build your house with Minecraft blocks at a young age. <laughs> <laughs> and live in the house that you build and design when you're like 12, which means it sucks. It's usually really hard to get around. Um, and also you have to take care of a giant beast that is your dad or mom. Um, so this spider needs to eat things, and the only thing that's really uh, available to her to feed it is other trolls. So Riska, she is a cerulean blood troll. There's a hemospectrum, I didn't put it on here, I, I guess I forgot. Trolls have varying blood colors and the varying blood colors uh, denote certain psychic abilities and uh, age, uh, you know, age lifespans. There's so a caste system. Caste yeah, system, right. yeah, yeah. So she is a cerulean blood, which means she's got blue blood and blue theming color. Uh, but with that power, with that blood, comes the power of mind manipulation, uh, which basically controls people's movements and makes them do things. She can do the, the mind thing and make someone, you know, walk off a cliff. And she does that a lot. She makes a lot of people, random friends, people she meets around, she makes them walk off a cliff and into her spider mom's mouth. Mm. She has to do this for years, and it 
fucks her up a little bit. She she just gets used to having killed hundreds of, uh, upon hundreds of trolls, people, you know, peers of hers. Um, but, you know, you know, that sucks. And she's, you know, she's getting off on the wrong foot already. She's a bit fucked up. Killing is normal. So, FLARP is a game. It is basically LARPing, but with an F in it. I don't remember what the F is. Um, oh, no, I do remember what the F is. The F uh, is, like, they have, uh, it's bat-themed, and they have, like, game abstractions called flapstractions, which are little bats that have, like, HB things, and they fly around. Um, they hatch from literal eggs. It's, it's you know, it's pretty cool. Um, but Flarp is, is a thing that she does with a few trolls that she finds to be not cringe enough to be killed. And therefore, you know, I will let you live and I will play video games with you called Flarp. Flarp is um, a big part of her life. She really likes role playing and she gets really into this character, which is um, Marquis Spinneret Mindfang which is a pirate empress from hundreds of thousands of years ago, well, not that many, but thousands of years ago in the Alternian uh, life thing. She finds her journal and she wants to model her entire existence off of this character and role play as her in her flap games that she has with her troll friends. Um, and so I guess we're going to get to this now. The Team Charge vs. Team Scourge, yes? Why, why does she like the Marquis Mindfang so much? Because she's, um, she's also Cerulean blood like her. And she um, is basically, she finds her journals mm. and they detail like incredible pirate adventures. It's basically just, this is the cool pirate lady and it's like, I want to be like her. Mm. She kills people, she takes over places in the high seas, um, she um, attains massive wealth and massive power and she's the coolest person. She has rivalry with, um, uh, well, I can't remember her name. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, basically, if I forget something, it basically it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> by definition. Yeah. So, this whole thing is uh, the Team Charge vs. Team Scourge. This is a uh, FLARP game that went wrong and uh, basically sets up the character of Riska and her interactions with her friends. Uh, this is a thing that is detailed throughout Homestuck. We'll get to that in a minute. But basically, Vriska, this is her symbol. They all, the 12 uh, trolls in the story, each of them have a zodiac symbol uh, you know, uh, assigned to them. There's, there's more than 12, but the idea of uh, the, the 12 that we know in the real world being these trolls symbols that just happen to be the trolls who are important to the story is relevant to the trolls creating our universe for real. Um, and so they're particular symbols that for them are just uh, like random, like whatever, just ha so happen to become important to human beings when they look up in the sky and find things. Um, but yeah, Vriska is this. What Vriska does is she cripples Tavros. Tavros is a loser. <laughs> He's a little bitch. He sucks. Okay. Yeah, I, I would yeah. think I would describe him as a simp, basically, for Vriska. Kind of. It's, it's a little bit like that. I mean, he, he's more, like, scared of her and is, like, so, uh, you know, unable to, to resist anything about her. Like, she, he isn't able to stand up to her to say, no, I don't like you anymore, please stop crippling me and laughing about it and, and blaming me for it. Basically, the, 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 the whole thing with this is that they're playing a game and Vriska... She's incredibly confident, she's incredibly cocksure, and, you know, she thinks she's the best, she loves playing the best, she loves beating everyone at the video games. And so, in this FLARP session, for some reason, she decides to hack the mainframe, or, you know, get the flap distractions and up increase the level of the enemies to unbelievable levels where Tavros couldn't possibly win. She corners him, and, and this is like an, uh, like an old, augmented reality video game, so that in the real world, but these flap distractions are around and you're finding them in the field. So Tavros is nearby his house in a field and he's pushed up against the cliff by these monsters that are way too powerful for him and Vriska is chatting to him, uh, you know, with the phone or whatever they have. Um, 
And she's basically goading him, like, y you know, you have to do something, Tavros. If you're not going, are you going to advance or abscond? Are you going to try and be the hero? Are you going to do something good for once? Are you going to be cool? Are you going to do anything? Are you, you know, are you based or cringe? This is the moment. This is the moment to see whether you're based or cringe. She, um, she knows very well that he can't do anything. If he tries to fight, he'll lose. And uh, he can't run away because he's up against a cliff. Um... And so he just refuses to play. He says, like, I'm not going to make my move. It's turn base. I'm not going to make my move. I just, I don't think I can get out of this. And she decides, like, okay, I've had enough of this guy. Because this guy, he's like this all the time. She's trying to make him a better person. She's trying to push him with tough love, extremely tough love. Like, you will die tough love. Mm -hmm. You will die, tough love. Um, and she mind controls him from where she is. And she makes him jump off the cliff. And he falls right down and breaks his legs, permanently uh, crippling him in a wheelchair. And she thinks this is really funny and that he's an idiot and lol. Um, the reason... Sick. Yes, pretty, pretty cool. So, <laughs> Aradia, which is uh, Tavros's partner in this game, who was currently being uh, distracted by this guy, um, mm -hmm. Doc Scratch, or Orb Head, Circle Man, um, she was like, oh shit, I fucked up, I let Riska cripple my friend, so she uses her, she's got red blood, rust blood, um, she uses her uh, power of ghost manipulation um, to send ghosts from Vr uh, Victor, uh, Victor? Riska's victims mm -hmm. that she's killed over the years, they all rise up and they say, stop. And they say, how could you do this to us? And Vriska is, is, is like groveling on the ground, really upset, really guilty. You know, um, I don't like feeling guilty. I don't like being shown that I've done bad things. I didn't do bad things. I swear. I cry. She, you know, she cries. Um, it's really upsetting for her. And this is her showing remorse, which uh, is an indication that she did nothing wrong because she's a good person. She, mm -hmm. she, she's fucked up because of her spider mom. She's not a murderer, except she is, but she's just fine. It's all right? It's cool. <laughs> so she's showing remorse, and that's cool and epic, and that's important to remember. So Vriska is, um, she is groveling, and, 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 you know, she's like, please let, have the ghost stop. I don't want to think about all these people I killed. This guy texts her and says, hey, you should fucking kill her. And, uh, and Vriska's like... <laughs> basically, I mean, they talk in text. Yeah. They talk in trolley and chat rooms. Uh, where they troll each other. That's what the, you don't like chat, you troll each other and, and that. So um, he says kill her. She says no. So that's, you know, she's a hero. She's a good person. She's like not going to kill. But she decides to kill her anyway. Um, <laughs> by, she decides to kill her anyway using, this is quite uh, sad and, you know, pretty cool. Uh, she manipulates Aradia's boyfriend or presumed boyfriend, Solux who has, like, Cyclops from X-Men laser beam eyes, except they're red and blue, both one in each eye. And she m manipulates him to go over to his uh, girlfriend's house, and uh, she says to Aradia, your boyfriend's outside, by the way. And then she uses his power of extreme laser eyes to kill Aradia, and Aradia's dead. Um, doesn't stop her from being alive, but that's, for now, that sucks. It's pretty sad, and the ghost stops, so Vriska's happy. Um, but Terezi... Terezi is another troll. She is, uh, was on Team Scourge. That's Team Vriska, and Terezi is Team Scourge. Team Charge is uh, Aradia and, uh, and Tavros. Terezi didn't like what was going on either. She would have stopped Vriska, but this guy was also distracting her at the exact same moment that she crippled Tavros. She uh, does a special thing. She explodes Vriska's eye. Um, the reason she's able to do this is because of the uh, cue ball. The cue ball is a special item that Riska has found along with the journals of Mindfang, which is an, an artifact Mindfang herself had in the past. And it's uh, like a magic eight ball, except if you look into it, it always tells the truth. The only problem is that the cue ball does not have a window. You can't shake it and look because and, it's just a cue ball. It's just completely round and smooth. You can't see the truth. But Riska has, I haven't drawn it here, but she's got vis uh, vision eightfold, which means she's got one pupil here, and then under this eye patch, there's seven more pupils in like a dotted pattern. 
So she has eight eyes, basically, eight, you know, eight, you know, eight, you know, like spiders, you know, like spiders. Um, so she has vision eightfold. She looks into the cue ball and she can see the future, which this guy doesn't like. He doesn't like being, uh, you know, this is his thing. He's also a cue ball. He's supposed to know everything. He's omniscient. And she's not supposed to have this. So he's not completely omniscient. He has, like, gaps in his knowledge. And so she... Uh, with uh, talks with him, doesn't matter why they're talking. It's just like talking. He started talking to her, and she's like, "Fuck you, whatever." Um, she has this thing, and she can use it to like learn the future and fuck with him. He fucks with her. You know, they don't like each other. Except he pretends that he's perfectly fine with everything because he's omniscient. And well, I, I expected you to say that. And she really gets annoyed when he does that. But um, Teresi knows that Vriska has this, and so Teresi talks to this guy and says. Uh, Vriska has your cue ball, and uh, she tells to uh, Vriska at the same time, check your cue ball, uh, lol, you might need to see the future right now to get an edge up on this guy, Doc Scratch. Uh, so she does that, and of course, once this guy knows that Vriska has the cue ball, he goes ape shit. This is the green magic shit. He's a green magic man. He's a first guardian, a uh, space god, powered by a green sun in space, the size of two universes. Um, you, don't need to do, you don't need to know too much about that for this thing, but he's very powerful, and he goes apeshit, and he explodes this. He explodes the cue ball in Vriska's hand as she looks in it. Her arm gets blown off. That's why she has a robot arm. Her left eye gets destroyed. She's bleeding profusely. She's going to die, and it sucks. She's like, that's not fair. All I did was kill a girl and cripple a guy. And I'm the bad guy? You're going to hurt me? <laughs> Stop it. I did nothing wrong. I can't catch a break. That's, that's Vriska. So, in Vriska's uh, massive intellect, um, she does what's known as the psychic double reach around, which is her using her magic mind power to kill Terezi as revenge for this. The reason there's, there's a psychic double reach around those is because Terezi has a blood type that cannot be mind controlled for some reason. Um, it's just a thing. Uh, mind Fang's uh, rival back in the past was also uh, Terezi's ancestor. Well, ancestor, sort of like, uh, what do you call it? The same but different. They were like a parallel character. Parallel, yeah, yeah, parallel character. So. They had a rivalry with that. She couldn't use her powers against her. Vriska can't use her powers against Terezi, and so she can't make her do anything. But she can control Tavros, and Tavros has a special ability which allows him to mind control beasts, specifically just beasts, like this. Um, Lucis, every troll has a Lucis, and Terezi's Lucis is a dragon, a dragon that sleeps in an egg and is blind, and it can communicate to Terezi itself. So what she does is she controls... Tavros, and uses his mind control powers to control Terezi's dragon, Lucis, which then controls Terezi, or influences Terezi, speaks into her mind, makes her sleepwalk, and walk outside and stare directly at the sun until she's blind. Mm. She's fucking blinded forever. There's a lot of disability in this, and it's a lot comes from this. Uh, so that's pretty epic, pretty cool, very smart. Very smart, very cool. <laughs> she did it. Later, when they're in, uh, in, the, in the game, they're playing the game, this I will explain in a minute. Aradia, punch, it doesn't look like a fist, but she punches because Aradia is a ghost. Um, she gets put into a robot body by a guy called Equius. Based. Based Equius. Based. Very cool guy. Makes a robot. Makes made uh, Vriska's robot arm as well. She he makes a robot for Aradia to be in. Aradia is now technically alive again. She is moving and can you know interact with the physical realm. She punches Vriska to death in the game. Uh, Vriska is bleeding out, and Tavros is with her. Tavros and Vriska have been playing the game together. She's you know he's a wet blanket. So even though she crippled her, he can't really say no to anything she says because she's so forceful. Um, so she and she and he are sort of like, you know, playing the game together, and uh, she asks him to kill her properly. Um, I guess there's a little bit of a, there's a lot of explanation to do in this one moment. So I will put a pin in that. Yeah. I will go to Homestuck, page two thousand one hundred ninety-five. 
or page 4094 in the old version of the, the website on MS Paint Adventures, Act 5, Act 1. This is the panel in which Ruska is introduced and the beginning of Homestuck. The rest of Homestuck doesn't matter. Mm. It's, basically, it's basically cringe. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for this. So Ruska, she likes, you know, as I said, role-playing and all that. We learn about her. Sagrub is a game that is uh, made to facilitate the universe of, well, the next universe. The universe exists, and um, players of this game, Sagrub, will be transported into a, a thing called the medium, where they have to do a lot of video gamey things in order to make some bullshit happen, in order to make a new universe. And in that new universe that grows uh, is human beings, and they also play the game, and it's called something different, it's called Suburb. And they play the game and they try to make their new universe. Basically, this is like a, a reproductive cycle of universes. Mm. And uh, Riska and the trolls and all that are playing this game. And uh, yes, that's all I really need to know. That's basically all you need to know about the entirety of Homestuck. It's just basically st stupid, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so they're playing this game. And yes, in the game, Aradia kills Riska. And Riska's bleeding out. But in the game of Scrub, there is uh, a dream self. And with your dream self, they live on this floating moon, two different floating moons, Prospect, which is gold, and Durs, which is purple and, and dark. Um, and Vriska wakes up her dream self. Oh, wait. I, I messed up the order. Here, Terezi slaps Vriska in the face. Terezi has been w awake on her dream self and Prospect. Um, and uh, this is like kind of sort of revenge for having, uh, you know, blinded her earlier. Yes. So there's two Riskas. There's there's one on the medium. One in the medium. And the other one is a dream self on Prospect. Yeah, the dream self. Everyone has their dream self and their real self. Um, and the regular, the original one is dead or dying. Dead or dying. Um, mm. I can't remember exactly. I think she wakes up on her dream self because the dream self. Sometimes you can um, you can awaken it and be like fully conscious on Prospect or Durs and be like looking around and be like oh I can see and feel things. A lot of the time you you don't access this power. You just sort of like fall asleep in the real world and then your dream self is still asleep. It sleepwalks. Mm -hmm. So Riska awakes in the dream world and she uses her mind control from the dream world to talk to Tavros. Please end my life. I'm bleeding out. It really fucking hurts. Please fucking kill me right now. Please, please. God damn it. Just, just cut my throat. Just slit my wrists. Smush my face in. Just do anything. Stab my heart. I'm fucking bleeding out. It really hurts. Tavros, for once in your life, do something. He doesn't. He, piss, he, pu he pussies out. He can't stand to do anything. He lets her die agonizingly. Lol. Um, he does bring her to her, her, her quest bed. Her quest bed uh, on the planet that they were they were on, um, and the quest bed allows her to reach God tier. What happens in God tier is that when you die in the game, you don't die for real, as long as you're on your quest bed, and then your dream self and your real self combine into one powerful, more powerful person. Um, in God tier, you can't die from physical injuries unless the way you die um, is determined to be a just death or a heroic death. So if you go down fighting a villain, that's a heroic death. If you su uh, suffer tre dreadful injuries and die, that's a heroic death. If you are a villain and you're killing people and somebody kills you, that's a just death. Mm -hmm. If you trip and fall down the stairs because you weren't looking and you die, you'll just come back. Because it's, Sick. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's God tier. So Vriska is on her quest bed, bleeding out. She just wants to stop the pain. Tavros sucks. That's the main thing to take away from Tavros, he's, he sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on when she wakes up, uh, Terezi slaps her, and then uh, that's, that's them sorted. Terezi and Vriska basically are buddies after that. <laughs> um, they never had that much of a difference anyway. And Terezi actually likes being blind, so it's, it's all cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. She, she likes being blind, and she li uh, she, her, cause her dragon's blind, and her dragon t teaches her how to sniff color. Uh, so she becomes like a sniffer. She sniffs and licks things, and it's really gross and cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's she's actually all right. So she doesn't do any she's like, like Napoleon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Aradia doesn't feel 
you know, that much camaraderie. So she does kill Vriska. Terezi just slaps her. Mm -hmm. And then later on in the, uh, in Murderstuck, uh, Vriska is just walking around and she just kills Tavros because fuck him. Mm -hmm. he's, he's had plenty of chances to prove that he's worthy of her and that he's actually cool. And the reason she's been doing this is because his ancestor was like a love interest of her ancestor. She's basically role playing way too hard. Mm -hmm. Because this guy is the guy, she wants him to be the guy for her because she wants to be this. And he doesn't. He sucks. Yes. Can you tell us what that ancestor dude was like? Was he a cool-based individual? Yes, he was a cool-based individual. He flew around with his, with his bug wings, and he controlled beasts, and he was ripped, and he was a chad, and he was all the things that Vriska likes. This guy is a wet blanket, pansy, no good, little bitch. That's and, too bad. And so, you know, over the course of, of things, there, there was a moment where Vriska tries to seduce Tavros, because Tavros, he, he likes some... Um, Poopa Pan, which is Peter Pan, but for trolls, because uh, they're kind of bugs, like a poopa, like a you know, like a like a little grub. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Pupa Pan. Pupa Pan. Um, so she dresses up as a sexy uh, fairy, like a Tinkerbell, and she tries to get him to kiss her. Make a move, you idiot! For goodness sake, I'm throwing myself at you. Be the Chad. Be the cool guy that I want you to be. And he gets scared and he doesn't do it. And so she starts to mind control him to make him do it. But she's like, that, that's not the point. Mm -mm. This guy's worthless. She kills him after that. Uh, she stabs him in the heart with his own lance that he has. Seems pretty justified to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck that guy. Yep. So this is basically what Vriska is like. She kills people and she doesn't know how to deal with romantic relationships. She's extremely obsessed with being a certain way and having an outward appearance that uh, she just sees is like the most base to be, the most least cringe. Um, and uh, it, it causes a lot of problems for her and for other people. Um, but Vriska did nothing wrong. She's just, she's just a little fucked up because of her spider mom and of other things that, uh, you know, she's not, she's not the bad guy here. She's a perfect little little lady. There she is. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but there she is. She's real, by the way. Wow. This is her life site. That she's just very quiet right now. <laughs> so, Homestuck. She gets in. She says, That's where she is. Scrub, God tier, Beck Noir. Now, Beck Noir is this guy. He is the villain from earlier parts of Homestuck. With, with it's you know the the humans are playing the game. Up until this point, Act 1 through 4 is about the humans and Beck Noir. And uh, Beck Noir is the big villain, the big bad, and he suddenly appears in the troll session. The trolls play the game. The game is basically to create a new universe, and to do that they have to kill uh, the Black King, which is like a giant chess man, um, and they do it, basically. It's, it's fucking cool. Um, but right at the end, when they're about to open the door, there's a door in this house. They open the door to their new universe. The idea is, you make the new universe, a door appears, you open it, and you step into the new universe, hopefully as a god tier, because gods literally are gods, they have powers, and they can't die of old age. So, if you go through the, the door and you're a god tier, you can live forever in this new universe, mm -hmm. and then the universe will reproduce and make another universe and, and all that. Um, they ab they're about to, as a team, open the door and go through, but when Beck Noir comes out of nowhere, he's also a green magic man that, you know, that sucks, because uh, that makes him super omnipotent, super powerful, they can't do anything about it, and they have to go into hiding. So they can't go through and they can't get their, uh, their ultimate reward. Um, fuck. They get stuck hiding out in... Uh, a, a, a ring of asteroids, an asteroid belt. Mm. And in one of these asteroids is a, is a... It's just sort of like factories. Like, I, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just buildings and rooms and stuff in these meteors um, where they can hide out. And they have, there are computers there, and they have computer technology that allows them to talk to kids in other dimensions. So they start trolling humans, basically. <laughs> this is the human meddling section. This is where Vriska and everyone else, uh, you know, fucks with humans that in, from the universe they created. Because they did create the universe, they just couldn't go over to see it. And the humans that grew up in that universe are contactable in 
the meteor. So they're on the computers and they're looking at these humans and they're like, lol, this one's fucking gay. And they say that to them. <laughs> yes. They, they also, like, they can view that human universe, like, fourth dimensionally, where, like, they can see any point in time. So, like, for the trolls, they can, like, in one minute send a message to the same person, like, what, at one point and then, like, five years later from that person's perspective. So, like, to the troll, they just typed two messages in a row, but to a human, you could have heard it, like, at two different, completely different points in your life. Yeah. They, they have... So they start, like, manipulating the main characters, like, through their... Like, turns out the main characters have been getting contacted by these trolls all growing up. Yeah. Mm. Some of these characters, like Carcat, who, who's, a, who's, a, who's cool, but he's also an idiot, um, he's, he decides to talk to uh, John. John right there. John Egbert. Um, you. Me. <laughs> I, I'm recounting, you know, I'm just, just in case you didn't know my name. That's how to spell it. Um... <laughs> Uh, he starts talking to me uh, backwards. So he talks to the most latest point in the timeline first, and that's his, uh, the, the first meeting. Um, and then he skips around the timeline and he goes backwards. And every time he does, he gets constantly frustrated because John is obviously experiencing life normally. He's going linearly. And Carcat is coming in at different points, going backwards. And when he gets to here, when John's like a young man, Carcat knows him so well, and John has never met him before. Mm. And uh, it's really hilarious and stupid. It's like a river song situation. Yeah, yeah. But it, except that Carcat is really gets angry way too easily, and so at any moment he is actively trolling him. Yeah, he's actively trolling him, and he's trying to make John upset. But John is so you know laid back and chill <laughs> that he can't do it. And you know that's that's and pretty also, cool. Also, like from John's perspective, these messages are completely incomprehensible because they're coming in backwards. And yes, it, it's ben. like. When John gets, like, Carcat's first message trying to troll him, John has already gone through the whole thing and yeah. knows what's up. And he's like, haha, oh, a message from Carcat. Hey, buddy. And yeah. Carcat freaks out. Cause he, he's, he, but then, yeah, and then, and then backwards, it's like Carcat is, is like the maddest at the end, or at the yeah. beginning, at, at the beginning of John's life. And John is like, I don't know why this person is yeah. talking to me. I've never heard of him. Why do they know so much about me? Yeah, it, it really annoys Carcat, but the. the, the it's really the, 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 that first interaction where John knows Karkat in any way before Karkat has a chance to gain the upper hand. And so he constantly feels like he's backpedaling. It's like, God, this guy, this John guy, he, he says he knows me. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> so human meddling is pretty cool. Riska herself talks to John quite a, le- uh, quite a lot. And she, through John, uh, has a rivalry continue with Terezi. Um, Terezi starts trolling Dave Strider, one of John's friends, and they sort of fight it out continually because they're this, you know, they're rivals, they're friends, but they're still rivals. They sort of fuck with these two boys um, that they've chosen, and they make the boys fight each other in certain certain ways. Like mm-hmm. they try to one up each other. Terezi and Dave end up having quite a rapport, like they actually kind of become friends. Like Terezi didn't expect this, which is like, hey, this, this Dave guy is actually really cool. Riska and John's relationship is a bit stranger. Riska is, you know, hard to deal with. She's hard to to talk to. John is quite similar to Tavros in that he's a little bit of a pansy, but he's not, you know, he's not like this quite. He can stand up for himself, but he's a bit of a goober, I I guess you would say. Um, And Riska, you know, she ends up kind of liking him. Uh, We can get to that later, Uh, but that's... Ah, I'm losing my train of thought. Is she the most important character in Homestuck yet? Or Murderstuck? Yeah, well, this, this leads into the most important character. Mm-hmm. The human meddling. Vriska and Terezi are trying to one-up each other. They're trying to be important in this human session of the game that John and Dave and two other people, Rose and Jade, are playing. Um, they want to be influential, and also because they've got nothing to do, they're just hiding on a meteor, they want to survive. Um, but... While they can, they'll just meddle with these kids. Vriska wants to be the most important character in Homestuck, and she does this by setting events in uh, motion that would lead to Beck Noir being real. Beck Noir was created in the human session, and he comes through from the human session to the troll session to destroy it. Um, and Vriska basically does her best to ruin the lives of everyone by making him the most powerful antagonist 
and having him run amok and kill everyone. The events that lead to his creation, she orchestrates because she wants to be the one that el ends up ultimately defeating him. Even, yes. even though his power, him being that powerful, is what ruins their session. Yeah, well the fact, that is, the fact is that it's already happened, so for it to continue to happen, something has to force it to happen in the past. It's like a timeline thing. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't do this stuff, then she will stop being in the Alpha Timeline, and the Alpha Timeline is basically the true timeline. If she were to not meddle with the humans and try to be the most important character and make Beck Noir what he is, he will never have come and ruined their session, which means the timeline she's in will be nullified by the universe, and it just wouldn't really, wouldn't, it wouldn't like collapse in on itself, like Back to the Future, it would just sort of like stop. It would stop being relevant, and the characters in it would just sort of like waste away. Um, and obviously it wouldn't be part of the comic and there's a whole like meta thing with Homestuck and mm. it being a, uh, you know being the most important character is something that characters kind of strive to be and they can fail at it um, but that's that's some that's a Homestuck thing that's not really important here <laughs> were you gonna say something I, that, that was kind of my question yeah. okay yeah so Riska makes this happen she's you know she's cool that's that's a cool thing to do murder stuck is also happening on the meteor there's uh, a bunch of trolls who are going a little stir-crazy being cooped up in this place. Beck Noir is a constant threat, and they are sort of arguing a little bit about how to deal with shit. Hang on. That makes me sick just to think about all that murder. Mm -hmm. Just gonna just cut this part out. I just wanna out. say, it's funny how, how much easier it is to actually follow the story when you tell it in linear chronological order, as the story is by no stretch of the imagination told that way. Mm. Yeah, that, yeah, this sort of stuff happens in flashbacks within flashbacks, and things that it's all over the place. Mm. You can only really figure out that this is a thing that is happening because of like an inc inciting incident once you, you know, lay them all out like this. Right. So yes, uh, Murder Stuck is uh, a time in the meteor where Ganzi, which is an ICP-based uh, clown juggalo troll, yeah. he's pretty cool. He goes honk, on a honk. he goes. Where's the honk honk? Munchie took it. Oh, oh Munchie! No. No, oh, God. Honk. If, we, if there's ever a time for is a there honk, ever honk, a time? Oh. Truly, this is a clown world. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Munchie, fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a clown, and he goes on a murderous clown rampage uh, because Dave Strider shows him a video of an ICP um, music video. Um, the fucking magnets, how do they work? That one. <laughs> Dave thinks it's, that ICP is cringe, and it's really funny, and he can't believe that there's a troll who is an insane clown posse guy. In the troll world, there is no insane clown posse. This is a religion. They practice this religion and... <laughs> yeah. it'll, it'll do. <laughs> so he is like, this is blasphemy. You've shown me like this horrible blaspheme of these human beings like pr appropriating like juggalo culture. He goes into a massive murderous ra rampage and he kills a, a bunch of trolls and he's like, he, you know, Jugglers are laid back, and then they can go insane. So this is his insane mode. He goes nuts. Eridan Ampora is that guy. Um, gets into a big incel rage and wants to destroy everything because he's like, this doesn't matter. We're just going to die. I'll start killing people. Uh, Tom first. Um, so he's mad that humans are blaspheming his faith, so he kills a bunch of trolls? Is it just because like, they're he, around? He, he just goes nuts. It, there's not like um, he goes just completely insane. Yeah, it's it's. He's just saying honk honk all the time. Yeah, he goes honk around honk. honking his horn there are, menacingly. There are humans on the meteor that he could <laughs> kill. He, 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 he becomes to. the most legitimately terrifying. Like, okay. like it's presented as like horror movie. This isn't an act of violence. This is an act of like just this, venting. Yeah. He basically becomes yeah. well, Jason Voorhees. Like, there's also I don't know. If, stop me if you don't want me to go into this, but there's also an element of like all the trolls have different bloodlines and his. Bloodline, the the perp, the indigo bloodline. It comes from like in the old troll society, they were just this 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 cast of trolls that would just like mercilessly slaughter other yeah, trolls. The, the, it sort of like comes the out of berserkers, I think. Yeah. Berserkers, yeah, the sub uh, sub I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's the, right. Whoa. Like so, jugglers so who are subjugators. It's yeah, cool. Shit. So it's so, like his instincts start taking over. <laughs> So yeah, Epic. he's doing stuff. Eridan is an uh, Eridan is an incel, and so he's going into incel rage, and uh, nobody loves him. And uh, he decides this is the time to kill everyone. Um, so he's doing that. Um, who else is doing murder stuck? 
There's, I guess that's the two. There's, there's, there's those two, and then Vriska, who just so happens to be killing Tavros for not yeah. crazy reasons. Mm. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, but like, it's not because she's going stir crazy on the meteor. And so the three of them meet up, and they have um, some sort of a, you know, a showdown, a, a sort of cowboy thing. Um, but then they all get beaten by Kanaya, who uh, is uh, she's a, a, a vampire, which means in troll society she glows bright. And she lives in the sun rather than uh, the nighttime. And she has a lipstick which turns into a chainsaw. Uh, she slices uh, Eridan in half, killing him. Uh, she kicks Gamzee in the dick, and he honks down into the in, into the black abyss. And then uh, I think she punches Vriska in the face, and Vriska's like, "Yeah, she's kind of into that. That's pretty cool. She's a, like powerful female. I like that. Um, I like that." Um, so murder stuck is just a sort of a side thing. Vriska isn't really involved in it. But it leads into Vriska's death, because during all of this murder, Terezi is, uh, she's trying to solve crimes. She's trying to figure out who's, t uh, who's doing the murdering, and she's going to prosecute and, you know, ex extinguish, execute the perpetrator. Um, she has a bit of a rivalry with Vriska, as we know, so when she finds out that Tavros has been killed, she assumes that Vriska has been killing everyone once she realizes that it's Vriska who did the killing. Mm. Um, and she confronts Vriska. At the same time, Vriska is thinking of doing this. I, I drew it bad, but this is cool. She's using her big cosplay powers, and she's going to kill Bec Noir so that they can all be saved. The reason she's doing this is because uh, she's bored, basically. Mm -hmm. She wanted to do it this whole time, but they were always thinking, no, we can't go and fight it. And she's like, you're all pansies. I can fight him. I need nothing more than my luck. She has eight eight-sided die, and um, during the battle, this, this does happen at one, one of the timelines, she rolls her eight eight-sided dice. They all come up with eights, and it's the most, um, the most lucky roll of all time. She's super-powered through, through this, and she ends up being able, to, being able to kill her, but we don't actually see it happen. There's a reason why she's so lucky, though, right? Is there? Because of her god class, because she's a thief of, t of light. Yeah, thief of light. I mean, it's yeah. it's hard. It's, it's hard to say. Stuck bullshit. We're here for Vriska. Is that, is that beside the point? Of well, it's. <laughs> the, it, I mean, there's there's ways to interpret it. It could be that like the thief of light is um, descriptive rather than prescriptive. Like mm -hmm. this is just the sort of the way it turns out. Like retroactively, the uh -huh. the, the way your character is equals Thief of Light, or Thief of Light gives her the power of luck. Mm. I'm not sure whether it's ever explicitly said which way it is. I choose to interpret it as these characters are somewhat predetermined to be the way they are so that they can have the role they have in the story, because it's all preordained, kind of. Yes, Tom? Fair enough. Um, just so I understand correctly, Vriska has been continuing to murder people and feeding to her spider bomb through the, all these events we've discussed thus far. It's just something she does Forever. It's not like a thing yes. she used well, to do. It's, it's still going on, and that's why she's under investigation now. Oh, well, let me explain. There's one thing about Scrub, which is when you get teleported into the game, um, the real world that you were on gets decimated by meteors and destroyed utterly. So spider Mom's dead at oh, this point. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. The idea is you play the game, you make a new universe so that you can live again. Your home is destroyed permanently, and, you know, it's just sort of a thing. It seems like a big thing, but okay. It, it does seem like a, bit th a big thing when you think about it, but these characters are very strange in that they don't really see it that way. They're just sort of like, oh, okay, okay. Cool. spider Mom's dead, I'm going in the game, okay. Culture is just violence and, like, hatred. I mean, so, violence so. and hatred, yes, but, like, John and the guys, they're like, wow. Um, <laughs> my, oh, my, home and my, my entire planet, like, it. reality as I know, it just doesn't exist anymore. What's going to happen in the, the 20... Uh, the 2012 presidential election. <laughs> like, is Obama going to get a third term? <laughs> they don't know. They, 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 they went into this in 2009, te uh, canonically. Mm -hmm. da Dirk, mm -hmm. Dave, uh, continues to like Obama and make Obama memes <laughs> well into 2020. <laughs> That's a little cringe, honestly. Yeah. I mean, he has no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, He's just keeping his culture alive, right? Yeah. So this murder stuck leads into Vriska's death. Terezi is going around trying to... Um, figure out who's killing everyone and put a stop to it. She is the the judge. She is uh, the Libra. She's justice. She's all that. Mm. She finds Vriska and Vriska says, "I'm going to go kill Beck Noir." Now, Terezi 
is in the game she is a seer of mind. You have uh, in the game you have like your uh, class and your aspect. Aspect is mind for her. For Vriska, it's light. They have different connotations, different things they mean. There's time, space, um, doom, you know, rage, mm-hmm. uh, and aspects are sort of like class classes in an RPG. So Vris- uh, Teresi is the seer of mind, which means she can see f- uh, possible timelines and she can act accordingly. So she knows what will happen if Vriska goes to fight Bec Noir. Bec Noir will follow Vriska's trail from where she came from because she leaves like a little fairy dust trail because she's got fairy wings because she's a, she's a fairy. She's, that's what she is, I guess. Um, she leaves a trail of fairy dust and Bec Noir follows it and goes to the meteor and kills everyone on the meteor and Vriska is the only one left. And then Vriska fights Bec Noir and who wins? <laughs> Demerit? Demerit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Finally. Who wins is up in the air. We don't get to see who wins. I th- I like to think that Vriska did have enough luck to win, and it's sort of a tragic end, because all of her friends are dead, but she sort of kind of survives. Maybe she dies killing Bec Noir. Um, but the thing is, Terezi sees this outcome, and she's like, no, I can't let this happen. She knows that in the only way to stop Vriska, because she can't convince her, is that she has to kill her. And so Vriska turns around, and Terezi stabs her in the back, killing Vriska. And this is the end, kind of, 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 uh, of Vriska's character arc. This whole time she's been sort of trying to do too much, trying to be too important. She's got so many irons in the fire. She's got so many irons in the fire, and she thinks that she has to do so many things. And it's sort of, it's a tragic end because... And even though she's got tears, she does die because it's a just killing. Yes, it's a just death because she will end up killing uh, through Bec Noir finding everyone. Okay, don't find Right. The reason it's a tragic end is because Vriska shows a slight, a real amount of humanity right at the very end. This whole time she's been posturing, showing herself to be the most badass, the most cool, the most important character, the best character, and I agree, but also she agrees. Um, but it's kind of a front. She's kind of not... She's not good. She had that moment where she was extremely grieving the fact that she did bad things, and she didn't want to think about it. She didn't want to think about the, sh- the fact that she killed so many people, and she's, she's, she's good. She did nothing wrong, okay? Mm-hmm. She can't catch a break. She's based. She did nothing wrong. She's cool, all right? Mm-hmm. This is the truth. Mm-hmm. Scribbling this down on my notes. Based. Nothing based. Wrong. Based. 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 But moments before she decides to go and do this, and Therese finds her and kills her, she talks to John. She's been talking to John a bit. John is like, kind of, kind of likes her. She's, she's pretty cool, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and she kind of likes John as well. It's kind of a bit awkward because she's constantly posturing, constantly trying to be not real. She's trying to be more than she is. But in this one moment, she tells John that she, you know, she appreciates him or like she's a little worried. She opens herself up vulnerability-wise. Mm. This is like the first time. Yeah, the first time she's truly... Show- this is when the shoe drops and you realize that this is really cool. Um, because showing vulnerability is, is, is so cool, guys. <laughs> and it, like, the fact that she didn't show it up to that point is, is why she can never be happy. I didn't write that down. That was one of the things that was going to be in this list. But she can never be happy. Vriska can, can never be happy. And it's really tragic. And we'll figure that out later. Um, so that's Vriska's death. She says to John, I'm a little scared about this. I'm opening myself up, run, uh, you know, being vulnerable to one person. The only person that she could possibly ever be with. The only person that she could actually be vulnerable with voluntarily. And this is this. Is this. Um, we'll get to the shipping later. <laughs> so, the end of Homestuck, Act 5, Act 2, Cascade, really cool, wow, stuff happens, it doesn't matter, it doesn't actually end, it's fucking, it, it's just a trick, <laughs> Act 6, <laughs> Act 6, oh, no. there's, there's good things, there's bad things, uh, I would say that for me, the bad thing with regards to this is that Vriska's character arc just happens again, um, and it's more on the nose, but it's still kind of interesting in its way. Um, so for Vriska, everything else that happens in Act Six is like there's a bunch of people and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, yes. If she's dead, how does her story continue? I will tell you. Oh. 
in Homestuck, or at least in the medium, when you die, even if it's a just or heroic death, you go to the afterlife. And the afterlife is just the vast expanse of nothingness where horror terrors live and they invade your mind and make you scream in agony. Oh, um, oh, so it's basically, it's basically hell, but with no fire. It's just sort of Cthulhu-like beings swimming in the sea of blackness for you know, eternity. Um, in this area, there are bubbles. Bubbles created by Feferi, who asked these, these giant horror terrors, um, could you please make um, some bubbles so that we're like, happy and not like, screaming constantly? Um, and the reason she do, does that is because these horror terrors are basically very similar to her pet, Herlusus, who was a giant Cthulhu undersea monster. So she could talk to them and she says, please provide dream bubbles so that we're not constantly inundated with endless torment. So they do that because they're, they're pretty cool. Mm. So the afterlife ostensibly is a bunch of bubbles. Bubbles in which the minds and memories of the characters who die sort of permeate and sort of shift in and out of focus. Mm. So, pirate, sp uh, pirate space adventure. In the dream bubbles, Vriska is wandering around. She's like, ah, I got killed. Well, whatever, I guess. Nah, it actually kind of sucks. I don't like doing nothing. I don't like not being the most important character. She kind of hasn't learned her lesson because, um, I mean... If she's still technically conscious, it's not really like she died. She just can't play the game. She can't be an important character that has focus. So she, at this point, she meets a version of herself called Aranea Circuit. Aranea is Mindfang. It's a little bit of a convoluted situation, but basically, Vriska and Mindfang are paradox clones. They were created at the same time in the game that they played when Vriska played the game. Um, it's hard to explain, but basically they're the same person genetically, and that's the reason there's a, there's a link between them. And this person was a different troll called Aranea uh, Circuit, and she died playing the game before. Uh, she played the game when she was about Vriska's age, and Mindfang didn't exist. And uh, they played the game and they sucked. They were going to lose. And they did a thing called the Scratch, which is like a disc jockey scratch that resets the world and, you know, redoes everything. So it recreates the universe again. It's a pretty big thing you can do. And um, yeah. she is replaced by Vriska, who is her Paradox clone. And Vriska grows up and in, plays the game in her place. She became this. She went way back before uh, Vriska was born and became this person who would influence Vriska to be the way that she is so that Vriska could go into the game and win. But Aranea still died in that scratch because you can't... You, she didn't go back. The world was reset and things happened. Mm -hmm. Ghosts can pile up on top of each other. The many timelines of different ghosts of the same character can exist in the dream bubbles. You can meet ten versions of yourself from different timelines and have conversations with yourself. But basically, she meets Aranea. Aranea has an idea to win the game of Homestuck because there's a bigger bad that we didn't know about before. And uh, she's like, okay, so there's a bigger bad. Bigger than this guy. Um, I want to do that. I want to kill that guy. So she goes on a pirate space adventure to find the Juju. The Juju is the only thing that can kill this guy. Lord English is his name. He's not really important. In fact, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she goes on a pirate space adventure with Aranea and her friend Mina Pixies. Mina, uh, Mina's pretty cool. Yeah. She's, uh, she's like a punk... Um, a punk, like, rap, fish, devil lady who likes murder and killing. Um, just like her. So, you know, peas, peas in a pod. Um, in this situation, other things are happening, but basically, Vriska is the result. Vriska finds the Juju, um, but she kind of gets disillusioned. She kind of realizes that being the main character isn't that great, actually. She starts to learn the lessons she should have learned when she died. Um, that maybe being the most important character in Homestuck, putting on a front, being repressed, is kind of a stupid idea. And actually, I just want to be me. I just want to be myself. I just want to be Vriska. And I just want to, you know, just live happily in the afterlife with Mina. Mina, she's in, she's in Hearts With. 
She she smooches uh, Mina, and it, you know it's all right. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It, she gets a terrible haircut. Um, she becomes full lesbian. Um, I'm not I'm not that into it, but you know she's happy, so whatever. It's cool. But now this is a whole other thing. Vriska from another timeline comes in and cucks herself. Yeah. It's always sometimes it just be like that. Rest in peace. I don't know how to explain anything that I'm about to explain. <laughs> cool. It's 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 very. Com- I mean, Homestuck. Imagine if I was trying to do a, a, a lecture on Homestuck. This would take. You'd yeah. have to just read Homestuck. You'd just have to read Homestuck. Just read Homestuck. This is Riska. Yes. Well, I mean, just so that we're clear, because I kind of legitimately forget. Just who was the Vriska who came in? Who? Was like Vriska, Alpha, you're a piece of shit, Beta, lesbian, retard. I'm gonna kill you and right. take your girlfriend and do actually meaningful things. Right. This, this, um, we back up a little bit. Mm. So there's two Vriskas because this Vriska has died. This is mm. the death of Vriska. But John Egbert has a moment where he gains the power of retcon abilities. Literal retcon abilities. He touches the juju. There's a point where he falls asleep and ends up in the dream bubbles, because that's you, when you dream, you go there. Um, he falls asleep, ends up in the dream bubbles, finds Riska on a space adventure, touches the juju, and gains a strange power that this is the logo of Homestuck. He's kind of puts his hand and he is in all of Homestuck. He retcons his, his self into the entire comic. If you know the arm retrieval arm, the one where it's cut off like that, that is Jean's arm that appears in the, the comic itself. Many, many pages were retroactively fitted with Jon's arm just poking out, like, whoa, dude, like, retcon. Whoa, it's, he's put it in the past, <laughs> and he's changed the comic forever. Um, and, it, you know, it was a really interesting idea, uh, cre- a comic creation ways. Mm. But, yeah. Um, he gains this retcon power, and he's struggling with it for a while. And in the game, in Act 6, other stuff that's happening that isn't Vriska in the dream bubbles that's dead, the people who are alive are trying to win the game, and they fail. They fail hard. Everyone fucking dies. Terezi dies. I mean, a lot of people I haven't talked about die. It's really sad. Game over, essentially, happens. They lose completely, and John has to go and retcon the story so that everyone can win. And the one thing that Vriska, um, that Terezi tells John in her dying breath to go and do is to save Vriska from herself. Terezi regrets killing Vriska because she's kind of her best friend, uh, despite all of the, the baggage they have. That you know they're fucking tight, they're cool, and Vris- uh, Terezi is you know. She feels guilty, and she feels also that Vriska would have helped if she was there. So John goes back and retcons Vriska's death. This part now diverges. Vriska is still dead, and she's still having her space adventure, and then gets disillusioned and decides, I'm just going to settle down. I'm just going to settle down and have lesbians with Mina, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> Vriska comes in. This is why she's in hyphens. Uh, hyphens? Parentheses. Parentheses. Um, Vriska comes in and she's like, I need the juju. You were looking for the juju and you fucking found it, but you didn't do anything with it. You're just sitting on it and you're fucking this, you're, you're smooching this fish, this fish princess. It's gay. It's pretty gay and it's not based. It's in fact it cr- extremely cringe. So <laughs> I, Vriska, I'm going to steal the juju and I'm going to kick you while you're down and I'm going to, on the nose, like this is the most on the nose, like character assassination, character, uh, you know, understanding that Vriska says to herself. We get to see Vriska's inner monologue, but outwards. Mm. Vriska says to herself, you're shit. She says all of her, you know, um, all of her, like, internal feelings that make her feel like shit, all of the things that make her cry, all of the things that she represses. She says to this Vriska, who is emotionally vulnerable and open and free and happy, and Vriska cries her eyes out, and Mina, who sees that this is pretty cringe, what's happening, decides to leave. 
she leaves and goes with badass Friska that is posturing and repressed and not really happy in the on the inside. Yes. So okay. So just to clarify, so John was doing a retcon thing with his juju powers. Okay, I got that. And you said that he stops Terezi from killing Vriska by he uses his retcon powers to do that. So like, what happens in that situation? So Terezi simply does not kill Vriska. Wouldn't that lead Beck Noir? to kill the team if Friska no, no, never no. went? If Friska never went, that's how, you know, Teresi killed Friska to stop her from going. Right. That saved the rest of them, mm -hmm. but it killed Friska. What John did is he, he appeared out of thin air mm -hmm. and then punched Friska in the face, knocking her out for a few minutes. Oh, okay. Friska was so befuzzled by this. Everyone else was like, what the fuck, John? What are you, what are mm -hmm. you doing here? I was trolling you not so long ago. You're in another universe. How are you right here, right now? It was very funny. Um, and Vriska was like, ugh, what? She forgot her plan, and basically, uh. the situation was quelled. Mm. Gamzee was shush-papped, he was calmed down, his juggalo rage was subsided, murder stuck kind of ended, mm. the, the yeah. tension, the shush pa -pa 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 -pa. Um, that's what he does, it's, it's the way to do it. It works. Yeah. I've done it. <laughs> and, and the tension is lowered, and everyone just sort of mellows out and they decide, we're going to be a team now, Riska included. She's like, okay, she's more responsive and receptive to the idea of not going and, and on a suicide mission. Mm -hmm. And so John leaves and they live. She is alive and she continues along in Act 6 while Riska is doing this still. And she meets Riska at some point by going into the dream bubble. Oh, she meets Riska because the dream bubbles, which physically inhabit some sort of space, pass through the meteor that they are on. Mm. And that is flying, it's very complicated and it's not really important for me to explain where they're going, but they're going to the place to do the thing. Uh, yes. Oh, well, I was just gonna say, it was really funny and really enjoyable to watch how, like, a dead, given up, pussy dream Vriska uh, was clearly, visibly, just changing her style to be like Mina and be like a punk you know, cool, badass girl, when Mina was so clearly not into it, and it was just really satisfying to see her get unbelievably cucked because she lost all personality and self-worth. Uh, it was totally appropriate. Love to see it. You you love to see it. Uh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, so, um, so Mina leaves emotionally vulnerable Vriska for closed-off, posturing, badass Vriska. Is the moral... Based. Is the moral that, like, fake posturing Vriska... Like, she's better when she doesn't let herself be happy? Yeah, no. She's trying. What? The thing is, yeah, it's, it's just that Mina is not a right fit for Vriska. Mina likes this fake version of Vriska. Vriska would be happier if she doesn't need to be like this. People who don't like Vriska the way she is would probably like Vriska if she acted like herself. Tavros may have been a good fit for Vriska if she was... If she could put down the whole, like horrible, mean bitch persona that she has. Mm. Um, John as well, which is why John is the correct choice. Mm. So, where was I? Oh yeah. She <clears throat> does the thing. Act 7. Vriska, new Vriska, not this Vriska, this means old Vriska. <clears throat> Vriska, with the juju, does the whole thing about killing Lord English. She puts the thing down, and uh, Lord English is this big Hulk guy. Doesn't matter. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, all the time. then she dies again. Shit. The thing is that Act 7 was the end of Homestuck canonically. This is where the curtain closed and we didn't get to see what really happened at the end of the final battle. What, what really did, did Lord English actually die? What did the Juju do? What happened to anyone? We don't really know. And so the epilogues are made, possibly planned to fill in these gaps. And what they do, they do two things. One is they suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. And they go into making new bullshit that can perpetuate into Homestuck 2, which is a thing that I haven't bothered to read because why would I? Who cares? Are um, these the Snapchat uh, updates? Snapchats do not involve Vriska. They involve Terezi a little bit. Terezi goes out with her dragon wing jetpack and tries to fly around and find where Vriska is. She can't find her. But in the epilogues, 
we learn two things. We, we, one, it sucks. One, it sucks and it's stupid and it's the worst thing ever. And two, we learn a little bit of closure. We get a little bit of closure about what happened to mm. some of the characters. So Vriska, when she put down the juju, out came the four kids, uh, John, Rose, Dave, and Jade. Um, and they fight Lord English and there's a bunch of fighting and Lord English is killed. There's a black hole created behind him from... Uh, created by Calliope, Alpha Calliope. Mm. You don't need to know who she is. She just makes a black hole. Um, pretty cool. He gets knocked into it or killed dead, and he falls into it. Vriska, before all of this happens in the battle, the, the black hole has some shrapnel, and it cuts her in the face, and then she flies into the black hole, <laughs> bleeding profusely, and is presumed dead. So her death is, you know, kind of anticlimactic. Mm. She does the thing that she wants to be, the most important character in Homestuck, and she just dies b before she can, you know, before anyone even sees that she did the cool thing. Lord English does die, so she, technically she was the hero, but she dies again. And, um, you know, whatever. Epilogues, don't bother reading them. It doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> then there's some fake shit. The fake shit is just... Homestuck 2 and going forward because the fake shit the epilogues is is uh, strange It's split into two There's meat and candy in the beginning of the epilogues John is in the new universe. They win. There's two battles going on. There's the battle um, to kill something and Win the game and go through the door like the trolls were trying to all those years ago they, well, yeah, years ago. They tried to open the door and they couldn't because Beck Noir came. This time, there's no enemies, there's no villains. They killed everyone, they go through the door. They're in the new universe and they're just chilling. And John has to think about the fact that, you know, there's still things he needs to do. He needs to go and facilitate this and facilitate uh, the ability to Lord English to actually die. Because Lord English is a battle that's happening somewhere else out in space. And he is going on a rampage, destroying space, punching it and cracking it until it might shatter completely. So John has to d decide, am I going to do the thing I'm supposed to do and potentially die and leave this wonderful, you know, it's the end and we're all happily ever after, uh, but I still have to go back. That's meat. And Candy is, you know what, I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to have fun and just live my life. Fuck the narrative, I don't care. I don't want to be the most important character, I don't want to do anything. Mm. Um, candy is fake. What actually happens is meat. Meat makes sense. It makes the timeline complete. But the strange thing about the epilogues that I didn't really understand because I didn't read Candy all the way through because it's, it's horrible. Mm. It, is, yeah. it is written to be a fanfic in all of the worst possible ways, deliberately a fanfic. He, H Andrew Hussey, the writer of Homestuck, worked with fanfic writers and he made it, the whole epilogue thing, look like a fanfic. There's no images, it's just text. And it goes into a lot of creepy sex, gore, horrible bullshit, Wait, ruining... Can candy does? Candy does. Okay. Creepy, gory sex. I mean, meat also has that, but less so. And the important stuff is, is not as this terrible. Is too? This can th this this is the fake shit that sets up uh, events that can be like inciting incidents for Homestuck two. So it's sort of like it's wrapping up the end of Homestuck and then starting a new story with the same characters. It, for all intents and purposes, purposes is not Homestuck, and it doesn't it shouldn't really act as Homestuck. But people are really suck it in. They know the characters. They're like, oh yeah, I'll read it. Idiots. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, you just aren't galaxy brain to understand that it's written bad on purpose. I it's know it is. It's a feature, not a bug. Enjoy the slop. <laughs> Eat the slop, you pig. Consume it. Consume it. It's Andrew Hussey's work. You need to put it in your brain because it's what you fucking deserve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Base. You're right. I mean, I know it's on purpose. That it is really kind of funny. Like the way that it's on purposely bad. Um, it's just, I really would have liked the things that I liked in the epilogue to be in the fucking thing because that's all I want. The certain certain cherry pick moments. John has a tr uh, like a really nice ending to his character and a really nice resolution. Terezi also. Vriska, she dies, which is a good thing because she should have died already. Mm. Her arc ended then, and that's where it should have continued to end. 
Yes. So canonically, Ruska has died like 11 times at this point. Correct? Yeah, there's a whole lot of death and rebirth. I mean, the fact that characters can... They die when they go on the quest bed to become a god tier, which is where they can l l never die as long as it's not heroic or just death. And, um, yeah, there's dream selves that can die, but as long as the, the real self is alive. And if the real self dies, the dream self can become god tier. There's, there's a lot of death that can happen. It's, you know, it's like, pretty cool. They can die and then be unkilled in, like, alternate timelines. Oh, yeah, alternate yeah. timeline versions can die or, or live, and, yeah. Uh, I was curious, I mean, it's, I read a little bit of the epilogue, and uh, it made me, it was a curious thing, because while I get that, it, clearly some of the intent toward the end was to save some of these questions after the end of Homestuck to be answered later, I don't really know why, maybe it's something to do with the fact that he wanted to end, like, on an anniversary, and there was, like, a deadline, so he couldn't tell more. I, 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 I could speculate, I mean, mm -hmm. there's part of me that thinks he wanted some of the resolution to be in the epilogue so that people would read it and so that he could make the next thing. Part of me also thinks that maybe he thought that this was enough and that you didn't need this because some per certain people when Homestuck ended they were defending it and they had pretty good reasons to you know like if you look at the you know things that are shown you can infer what actually happened but the, it was just not it was a bit wishy-washy. Wishy I wanted it to be more concrete just because everything else had had have it had had a more concrete resolution throughout the entire thing, and the very ending is just sort of like, and then you sort of decide kind of. It, it, seems, it seems weird to like be like, okay, this is the end of Homestuck, so keep reading to find out the answers to the questions. Yeah. But, but I mean, beyond yeah. any of that stuff, I, you know, it being good or bad it doesn't matter. I was, it's, it was I, when I was reading the epilogue, it was very interesting that clearly. Everything's been extremely meta narrative the entire time that Homestuck's been going on. But, like, the, the, the issue, the grand villain that they're struggling with, clearly, as described, like, by, I think, Therese, or Rose, who's telling John about it, is, like, we are fading from canonicity slowly and gradually. This is, the, this is like, the entropy. They're clearly describing people stopping giving a shit about Homestuck. That is so clearly, like, what the villain is. And... I, their their attempt to solve that by dragging out the story and making it less and less interesting and more fucked up yeah. is a, is a very surprising yeah. I mean, way to handle it. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about the epilogue because yeah. I've only read Meat. I feel like before I talk with any sort of um, uh, authority on the matter, mm -hmm. I should read the other half. It's just so it hard. It sucks. It's so it's hard shit. to read. Like the first thing that happens is that in in Candy is that. Um, John has to retcon Gamzee coming back. Gamzee has been like a super villain the entire time, a completely obnoxious, terrible person that you would never want to have in your house. Mm -hmm. And he's told to um, bring him back because we can. Okay. And and he just sort of does really annoying things. And John is like, oh, why did I do this? <laughs> oh. And he just has to deal with it. And it's basically like indulgence is is the idea of candy. Mm. Indulge mm. any and every possible fan thing. Certain mm. people love the terrible characters. Mm. They love them. They stan Eridan. <laughs> it's very strange. I um, kind of like Eridan. He is a bit of, he's, you know, I guess he's kind of based. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not based at all. No, he's a little based. He's a little based. He's got a cool character he's got, design. He's got the best, uh, he's got the best land. He's, so, he's got a know. cool, like, what, his wand, his cool. wand and his, his magic and, his, you know, the fact that he's a terrible incel and he's, like, a horrible person, you know, people look past that somehow. I don't know why. So the epilogue and all that shit aside, uh, like, is this leading in? I, I have not read or was unaware of Homestuck 2, which is different from yes. the epilogue. Yes, Homestuck 2, Homestuck 2 carries on the events that are uh, incited in the epilogue. Yeah. Uh, things like Dirk being a spacefaring guy who kidnapped Rose Lalande and went mm. off to do something. I don't really know. It, it needs to be mentioned that Homestuck 2 is not like written by Hussey. It's like a coalition of fanfic authors. Yes, it has. It ha is, is a coalition of fanfic uh, well, fan authors, fanfic authors and just writers that Hussey has hired. Um, and they have their own Patreon, and they update extremely slowly compared to Hussey himself. And Hussey has a tangent, like, I, I, from what I've heard, Hussey likes the whole project, and he's, and he's all for it. Um, but I don't know how much of his ideas are, like, at the forefront. I can assume that it's well-written, I just haven't read it enough to really understand. 
my final editorial comment is it's really fucked up. Imagine if like Kingdom Hearts 1 came out and then Kingdom Hearts 2 came out and it's like a fan collection of like fucking short stories by the fucking fans. What a retarded idea. I hate you, hussy. You fucked up. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. So thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so really the point of having that at all is to say that Vriska's death here is the tragic end to a character that is elaborated on why it's tragic here. You, if you were paying attention, you would figure that out, like what she's like through that one conversation she has with John that is kind of like revealing of her inner turmoil and inner insecurities. And that makes this moment extremely, extremely cool. And this is the moment like most people who love Riska started to really love her. Um, and then this is sort of like, it, for, any, for anyone who is a little slow, you didn't really understand, we're going to go into excruciating detail to explain that Vriska's death is tragic because she has, um, you know, insecurities. This moment here is <laughs> this moment here is for if you didn't understand this moment here. Like the, the next entire act, which is longer than all the other acts yeah. together. That's in case you didn't understand yeah. the ending. Yeah. Mm. On the subject of Vriska, the whole entire point of this, Gib, is she a Mary Sue? Is she a character that the main writer just loves and he made her important because he wants to have sex with her? I mean, the second part is true. Yeah. The, <laughs> Andrew Hussey, as a character, does appear in Homestuck and proposes to Vriska. Uh, and it is very funny. Um, the Mary Sue thing, I don't think, is, any, is, is not true. Because of, the, because of all of the insecurities. If she was all of this and well-adjusted, it would be a bit, like, whatever. Um, yeah. But because she's so fucked up, because she does so many bad things, she did do some things wrong. She, whoa, whoa. you know... Um, she sometimes is a little bit cringe, actually. No! Oh my god! No. Her, her, veneer, her veneer of perfection crumbles at certain points, and that's what makes her so interesting and why I would go to such lengths to talk about her on a thing. But, but yeah. There's, there's the thing about her being the most important character. She sets out to make herself the most important character, which may, might, you might think, oh, that's kind of a Mary Sue thing to do. But, like... The fact that she has access to these like trans timeline, th like she has access to the whole timeline of this other world, like she, there's a plausible reason in the story why she has the means to do exactly that. Yeah, and yeah. it's not like she's like anyone else could have done what she did. She was just the one with like the personality that yeah. was like, I want to be the one to do that. It is, a, yeah, there's many moments where she does does things that you could argue are wrong. People say Friska sucks. She she tried to she made the villain. That's bad. You don't do that. But she was right all along. <laughs> Tom, uh, someone who knows nothing about Homestuck other than what you just said, is the fact that like with uh, Friska becoming God tier and God tier being the only ways you can die, being a just heroic death, work into the idea of her trying to be the most important character because even though she has immortality, the only way a character in literature really gets a fucking dope base death is either a heroic or just end. Is that like all thematically tied, or is it coincidental? Um, it's, uh, I would say it's thematically tied. Other characters, obviously, if they play the game, can get god tier and have this power as well. So it's not exclusive to Vriska. Um, but it does come into play more with her. Like, I think some of the moments, like John, is where we uh, learn about the... the, the the, um, he gets God tier and then he gets killed in a random accident or like he's not looking and he, somebody stabs him. And so we use John as a way to introduce people to how God tier works. And when it comes to Vriska, it's more of like the, the heroic just thing um, that comes uh, with, the, with the space clock that tells you which way it is. Uh, I was yes. going to say, yeah, like there's a whole thing about like when Terezi kills her before she goes off to fight Jack Noir, the space clock that determines is this just a heroic? It's like, it, it's like it hasn't decided which it is. Because like on the one hand, it's oh, it's just because she, the thing she's about to do is going to lead to everyone dying. On the other hand, it's heroic because she's going off to defeat. She thinks she's going off to defeat the big villain and hopefully win and save everyone. But yeah. then the, the clock hasn't decided yet before this other character who has a magic crowbar like smashes, it. smashes the clock yeah so it's not clear what the clock was going to land on or why she died like did she die because it was one or the other or because the clock was broken and it stopped working at yeah. that very moment it's it's very it's it's really interesting all that stuff homestuck is really really cool this character is just one aspect i could do lectures on other characters or other aspects that are, w would be They're even longer <laughs> they'd, they'd be a little less based yeah. <laughs> all right so before the very well, yeah. What the 
fuck is Homestuck? <laughs> Homestuck is a show, uh, I mean a comic, <laughs> where uh, riskers. <laughs> <laughs> The more people explain it, the more confused I am. <laughs> now, lastly, I'm just going to go over the shipping stuff. So, yes. before we get to the shipping, there's troll romance, um, which I will go into briefly. Um, trolls have complex romantic relationships. They use more than just the heart to denote a romantic affection. And uh, there's, there's an axis. So on this, on this side, there's red romance, which is generally considered positive emotions. So this one is the human one. We all know what this is. It's lovey-dovey. It's like, I love you. Smooch. That's that one. Mm. This one is like bromance. It's like, you are my best friend. I love my best friends. You're there, the, cool, there's, there's the coolest guys ever. <laughs> um, and, so that's, that's cool. And, and they, there's, that's a part of like, because trolls are really violent. That's like a... It also, it's like, a you, pacifier. You keep each other from going crazy yeah. and killing people. If if that's you if you got a guy who like can can sort you out, that's that's the, that's that sort of thing. Black romance is more negatively charged, and um, this is like hate love. Like I hate this person so much that I have a fierce passion for them and uh, like a desire to to be involved in their life all the time. And you know it's kind of the opposite of this. It's, it's a like, consupiscient. Like Huh? The monarch from the Venture Brothers, like just completely obsessed with Doctor Venture, Dr. yeah, Venture. rivals or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah it is like rivalry. Uh, and uh, this one is the club. Uh, this is Ashen. This is the Ashen Quadrant. Um, uh, this is sort of the same as this, but for keeping people from fucking going insane. It's usually a group of three, so. There's two people who would otherwise be hating each other, and then a third person comes in and mellows them all out. It's it's a very you know it's pretty complex, but oh, there's mediator. mediator. Yeah, this is a mediator ro romantic relationship thing. It's weird that it's a romantic relationship, but so it is a thing in real life. We'll give you a boner if you're a troll. No, not necessarily. Just the top two. Just the top two. Oh. The the, the consupiscient. I can't say it. Mm. Uh, ones, which is the more flushed. Um, the more, you know, this one and this one, they lead to reproduction. So that's the boner one. This is the boner two. Uh, you can love someone and get a boner, or you can hate someone and get a hate boner and have angry sex and make a baby. This is these. Conciliatory relationships are more about, like, platonic, like, you know, just life things. You, you want to, you know, you need, you need your best friends and your mediators to sort you out. This is this. Is this. So, all that said... Eridan had a little bit of a fling with Riska. She and he hated each other. Well, that's the thing. A lot of these are unrequited. So Eridan had spades for Riska. Mm -hmm. She didn't really give a shit. Um, they were like, they like fought each other in Flark. Right? Yeah, they she's she, in the Flark days. He was one of the, the Flark people. He was also had an ancestor who was a seafaring sort of scallywag shoot guy with a rifle, and they, their, them two had a thing in canon in their real life and Risco's like, whoo, that would be cool. Let's role play that um, with the the answer uh, the the descendant. Um, but she didn't actually doesn't actually like him that much because he's a kind of a creep and a horrible piece of shit. Um, Mina, as we discussed, Frisco was in Hearts 4 and uh, uh, Diamonds as like best bros sort of thing before that, before she realized she was flushed. Um, so that was the thing. But it didn't really work because Mina was not in love with Vriska, she was in love with Vriska. Mm -hmm. And Vriska, when she turned to Vriska, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Terezi is uh, Vriska's rival. They never really hated each other, they were always sort of like buddy-buddy, but Homestuck Trolls are kind of like, just baseline kind of violent and, and you know, terrible. Um, you wouldn't want to meet one, really. They, they <laughs> might just, you know, push you off a cliff for a laugh, and it will be funny, and you will not find it funny. <laughs> so, best bros is like, you know, they still try to fight each other, but it's, it's all cool. But it doesn't really go anywhere further than that. Um, they sort of mellow each other out. They, by themselves, alone, they kind of go insane. Uh, but together, they're, they're pretty cool. Now, Tavros is uh, an unfortunate one. Vriska, as I said before, loved Tavros because, well, wanted to love Tavros, but she couldn't because he sucks. And so she sort of goes between loving and hating him, hearts and spades, 
because every time she, you know, she feels like she's doing something good to make this guy into a cooler person that she can love and, you know, romantically marry and, and all that stuff. He makes, a, you know, a mistake that's really stupid, mm -hmm. such as this moment here, where he just shows that he's just, he's just not, he's not made of the right stuff. And this, I can't remember why I put that there. Um, I think it's like the, the hate between Tavros and Briska is mediated by Kanaya mm -hmm. here, who sorts them out, makes it so that Riska doesn't kill Tavros earlier, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, Kanaya had a bit of a unrequited love thing for Riska. Um, powerful women. You know, Kanaya, she likes powerful women. Riska is a powerful woman. But Riska doesn't really care. And so, Kanaya goes, uh, goes with Rose Lalonde, who's also a powerful woman and kind of a bitch. But not really a bitch, but she's just really intelligent, really smart. She likes that smart shit. Mm -hmm. So, you know... That and this and this and that and, you know, friendship and all that shit. But here's the main one, is John Egbert. Because John Egbert is the one person who I think, hypothetically, could have made Vriska happy uh, forever. And this would be the perfect timeline where Vriska was able to be a vulnerable, you know, real person. And John would, able to, would be able to like her and Vriska would be able to like him. And it would have been truly based. Mm. It just doesn't happen, is the, is the annoying thing. Um, <laughs> so close. So close. So she's dead? Yeah, now? so okay. in this, in the, well, not just like this specific Riska, but the idea that Riska has this in her. That if she would, were able to be vulnerable with John, the, the thing about this Riska death, the first one, that's super tragic, is that John wasn't reading his computer when she sent that message, mm. and he never noticed. Mm. So she, he never really realized that she had this, this softer side that um, he was more into. And when he was with her on the pirate space adventure, he kind of snapped. He was like, Vriska, you're, you're kind of a piece of shit. I, I can't believe I kind of liked you at some point. You have continued to be this. And you're kind of a bitch. And you know what? I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to stand for you. I'm getting out of here. That was the moment where John and Riska could never happen. Because John... Um, yeah, John gets sick of Riska. And he says, I'm, I'm getting out of here. Mm -hmm. and, and Tavros does the same thing. But it's not as cool because he's a pansy. But, uh, that, you know, whatever. He, he has his moment. People actually like his moment when he's in, in, the, in the, um, the afterlife. Where he does a silly gif of him doing a Charleston. It's like, Tavros finally won something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate that part. It's terrible. No, it was kind of funny. It was. It I mean, was. It's, it's a funny the joke. joke. It, the joke is that who cares that Tavros has a satisfying character yeah, arc yeah. because it's not satisfying. Yeah. Tavros's thing is saying constantly over and over again that he's trying to get self confidence mm -hmm. and it's like, well, thanks to my self esteem that I've been cultivating, I think that maybe I'm going to stand up to you. Like it's just it just doesn't come across <laughs> yeah. in any way. He just doesn't get it. Stupid. Fuck you. <laughs> so, the thing with John is that Vriska continues to be Vriska for too long, and John pieces out. And he goes to be with Roxy, who unfortunately turns out to be um, a a skull fucker, because <laughs> she true. she she gross. she goes to have uh, romantic relations with the cherub, which is a green skull oh, uh, person, right. who's you know she's nice. Um, John could have made it with Roxy, man. He could have done it. He was too much of a fucking pussy to seal the deal. I, I mean, uh. maybe. I'm not sure Roxy would have been that was the perfect too into it. It's, it's, it's sort of a strange thing. Even in the epilogues, I'm not really sure, because Roxy turns out to be trans. She goes uh, female to male. And what? I don't remember that. It's in, well, it's in one the of them. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. And there's this sort of like... Maybe the whole time she wasn't really going to be into John, but this is why this puts more of a tragic thing on spin on, on Vriska herself, which is the, the perfect person. Because John likes her. He really kind of likes her to begin with, and he just gets tired of her shit. And if she had thrown away the shit and continued to be Vriska, he would have continued to like her probably. Because he's, he's not... He, he doesn't really love her badassness. He's... he's... <laughs> he loved her in spite of it. Whereas, yeah, he, uh, Mina loved her because of it. Right? Yeah, Mina yeah, loved her because yeah. of it, John loved her in spite of it. He, he's, uh, you know, he's a silly boy, and 
she's a silly girl, and they would have been perfect together, and that is my, my spiel on the shipping. I don't know whether people will agree with that, but that's, that's basically, that's correct, and that's, that's correct. Contentious <laughs> issue. Yeah. So, um, that is about it. Uh, that's Frisco, that's her role in the story of Homestuck, that's why she's my favorite character, and um, that's why I got this made of her. For like a couple hundred bucks, because I like Friska so much. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her. Friska, 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 Friska. Yes. Uh, uh, sense I given. If I liked this lecture and I liked Friska and I wanted to see more characters like Friska, particularly with a pumpkin head, where would I go? Uh, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> Give and take. Dot site, the one-stop destination for all great online web comics and other content. One. And yeah. not a single one of them has a bad act six or seven, right? Or no weird <laughs> epilogue, they're just fucking based 100%. Yeah. Whoa! I did base Punk a little bit on Briska, but that's maybe just a character archetype I like. Give and take dot site. I make comics, I'm inspired by Homestuck. If you agreed with my take on Homestuck, you might like the sort of things I make on here. So go there. Go and read Bale Jape. Go read Bale Jape and the Lord of Ghosts, and uh, that, that's all I've got at the moment. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. sick. So yeah, the, thank you for thank you for listening, Woo! everybody. Well, Mister, thank you for educating me. And that that is the end of uh, PCP PCP. Uh, <laughs> The PCP lecture series for Radcon 4 is over. This is the last one. Yeah. Finally. It's it's time to go on holiday. Graduation. Yeah. Wow. Time to go on holiday. Back to school. Wait, no. The opposite of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>